Okay, so welcome and uh, yeah, let's do the first talk of today here. Uh, yeah, first I will introduce myself, uh, talk about uh, why we are doing that. Yeah, and uh, the talk's name title is uh, "Desktop on an Open Power System," and the answer is yes. So here is the agenda. Uh, why something about the hardware? Uh, then talking about yeah, the operating system and the software and also some of the challenges because uh, yeah, it's still not that smooth as it uh, should be and probably or likely will be in the future. So I am Dan Horak. I am uh, for yeah, over 11 years uh, employed at Red Hat. And uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And I'm working in the multi-architecture team, uh, and uh, yeah, the team's goal is uh, to make sure uh, that we have a parity uh, between all architectures uh, on the enterprise side for the operating system and uh, beyond, meaning all the layered products, uh, OpenShift, OpenStack, middleware, everything should be supported at some point across all the architectures, yeah, you, I think, understand the primary ones uh, or the early ones where the x86 based, but we also care about uh, ARM 64-bit, power, naturally, and also uh, the mainframe, so that's uh, yeah, the scope of the, uh, of, of the team. And my part is uh, to make sure uh, that Fedora, the community distribution, which is the source of all the enterprise stuff, works well on, on power and uh, mainframes. So it's just it's a part of uh, the of whole efforts. Why would someone want to run a desktop system on a power system? Uh, First answer is why not, because yeah, people have uh, yeah, different ideas, opinions, uh, different wishes, so why not? The other, I think, more important reason is uh, yeah, the job booting, uh, or uh, really do some testing for what we produce. As I said, I work on the community side, so or mainly on the community side, so uh, really testing of what we produce for the community distribution if it really works because if it builds from sources it doesn't mean that uh, it can be actually used. Also uh, when developing software debugging uh, or debugging issues in, in the software uh, you can work either remotely or locally and I think using it locally it's um, often more pleasant experience really to yeah, touch the system on your desk, and uh, yeah, it's uh, easier than yeah, having a system somewhere in the, in the data center, logging in remotely, and uh, yeah, sometimes it's it's more difficult. Also, uh, open power systems are known to be uh, high performant and open, so it's uh, yeah, there is no excuse if anyone wants uh, a really performant uh, workstation at home. It can use power system. There are some other platforms uh, that are probably also open, but uh, the performance uh, is still behind yeah, its power. So the reason and the openness, it's also uh, very important. As or was mentioned already here, it's open since the first instruction run on the CPU, and now with uh, yeah, the open instruction set it's open even below that so that's also a nice feature and uh, yeah thanks to the openness uh, security or privacy sensitive people can uh, inspect everything uh, do some auditing or anything like they want so they know they can make sure they know uh, what they are running on their system and also the last point here is that uh, heterogeneous environment uh, usually helps increasing quality because uh, some issues can be only uh, discovered uh, when running on some other platform because they 
not all of them behave the same. And I think I will show an example that uh, yeah, it really, really makes sense and really is uh, able to discover some real problems in the source code. Uh, yeah, for the hardware side, again, Open Power Foundation and yeah, the whole effort about Open Power open it uh, the chance for the ecosystem coming from originally from yeah, the IBM enterprise systems or uh, the embedded stuff uh, really to some uh, combination of the power and uh, openness. Uh, thanks, for example, to the companies like Corruptor who are producing uh, the wars and systems so that are I don't. I don't want to say cheap. They are not cheap, uh, they, but they are uh, price effective, or <laughs> how to call it, uh, for the regular users. So uh, these days there should be maybe no excuse for people to really be able to buy uh, such systems. And again, there are many companies uh, that are part of uh, the Open Power Foundation. Uh, the hardware vendors like IBM, Tyen, who was uh, yeah, one of the first in the open uh, with the Power 8 systems to produce some open power hardware, Supermicro, Raptor, Winston, Inspur, uh, Yadro, and uh, yeah, probably I forgot someone, but uh, really the number of companies is really growing and yeah, expanding. Uh, uh, the possibilities to buy something, the various kinds of hardware uh, that people can buy, and uh, yeah, there is also let's say a branch of of the hardware that's really capable uh, of uh, serving as as a workstation or as a desktop development system. One uh, big difference uh, between uh, the server class hardware and uh, yes, let's say workstation or desktop class hardware is, I think, in the fan management or in the uh, how the cooling system is designed uh, on the enterprise server systems. It's usually running at the full speed, but it's not anyone wants uh, to have under their desk. So really having uh, yeah, the BMC who is managing the system, really watching the temperatures and uh, stuff like that, and really adapting uh, yeah, the speeds uh, to the needs. So, yeah, and that's available with uh, yeah, the open BMC uh, based systems like the Raptor one. So, yeah, there is also no excuse for having a workstation at home under, under a desk. And, yeah, uh, because I personally own uh, the Talos 2 system, it was uh, yeah, probably the I think the first uh, workstation class hardware for developers after uh, 10 years delay. The previous one was the uh, Yellow Dog Linux uh, power station based on the uh, PowerPC 9, it's for the 970 CPUs, I think. There were some, uh, some workstations uh, produced even by IBM uh, targeting uh, as a CAD system or uh, stuff like that, but uh, yeah, they were more uh, tower-like <laughs> servers or uh, something like that, uh, which, yeah, which were pretty loud, so nothing anyone would like to, to run for longer periods. So, some technical details about the system I am actually using. Uh, yeah, the Talos board is, uh, yeah, the Further development of the reference design really improved and uh, with some major improvements on the management side. As I said, the, the fan management is, uh, I think, the major part here. Uh, some other details yeah, uh, for the CPU memory. Uh, for the uh, video card, uh, I checked with uh, a colleague at Red Hat who works in the graphics department. So I would have a person to come to if there would be some issues <laughs> with the graphic drivers. Uh, yeah, for the audio, I checked the, the compatibility list uh, at the Raptor Wiki because someone already uh, used that. Uh, 
for the storage, uh, I used some pretty old uh, SATA hard drives uh, from a shelf somewhere. Uh, so it was not the best solution, but uh, I used the, the onboard SAS adapter because I'm working um, in the community <coughs> distribution uh, and I was wanted to be able to check uh, the various installation scenarios. I needed also the physical uh, DVD drive, which is not used mostly or by most people, but uh, still we are producing uh, the ISOs and uh, we should be sure that what we, uh, what we produce is actually usable. And unfortunately, uh, the SAS adapter is not capable of uh, driving uh, uh, the DVDs or the, the ATAPI devices, so yeah, another card had to be put into, into the system and yeah, some additional USB ports, uh, it's uh, never enough of them. Uh, but yeah, you could use uh, uh, hub, but uh, yeah, PCI cards <laughs> works as well. And recently I, uh, I just bought some NVMe uh, SSDs and some uh, PCI carrier board uh, with, uh, with uh, PCI Express switch uh, on the card, so it's uh, yeah, capable of attaching four uh, NVMEs. So no experience uh, with that yet, it's just waiting on my desk to be put into, into the system. Uh, now we are getting more to the software part. Uh, Fedora as the community distribution, primarily backed by Red Hat, but with a very large number of contributors outside Red Hat. It's a collection of uh, roughly 20,000 of uh, open source projects uh, that are put together and uh, yeah, built in, in, in a single build system and uh, out of the binary uh, binary products, uh, binary packages. Uh, we are producing some things that's usable uh, directly by the users. Uh, important information is that we all we built all these projects uh, in a single build system uh, from a single source uh, in a single step for all these architectures. So it's uh, uh, it's sure that uh, we will build, uh, for example, the LibreOffice. Uh, uh, Office Suite. Uh, it's built against the same live versions of libraries across all the architecture. So uh, the issues, if there are some, they should be all on the uh, same uh, on the all architectures. Uh, the flow of uh, yeah, the open source projects uh, through well, it's from. Uh, from the Fedora, from the community distribution to the enterprise uh, Linux distribution, that's uh, yeah, it carries only a selected part, small part of the whole uh, community distribution, and then at the end uh, is uh, the CentOS distribution, which is yeah, the rebuild of the enterprise Linux sources, so it serves uh, yeah, some other uh, consumers, users uh, than the enterprise distribution. Now, uh, in Fedora, we are focusing on the little Indian power, 64-bit, since the version 29, which is uh, yeah, a year old. Uh, we used to have 64-bit uh, big Indian power, which we dropped, and also years ago, also the 32-bit variant. Uh, the consumable products uh, we offer uh, to users is the so-called everything compose that's yeah, the really the whole distribution there is one for more focused on the server side it contains a limited set of of binary binary packages and also there is uh, cloud and uh, container images a yeah, quick image and stuff like that so that's uh, what we have now uh, in the future uh, we will in the next version, we will also have the silver blue and uh, workstation live image, which is really focused on the uh, on the desktop users. Uh, silver blue is uh, the immutable uh, uh, workstation based on the atomic technology. They will be switching uh, to the core OS, uh, which is similar thing, uh, taking care of yeah, doing immutable uh, updates or stuff like that. 
a workstation is really the workstation you can get on any Intel platform now as well. Uh, for people interested in yeah, various uh, desktop environments, it's easily available uh, through the Everything Compose. There is all, all the desktops, GNOME, KDE, XFCE, LXD, whatever uh, is available. It's all here. Uh, there were some issues uh, for the installation uh, earlier when installing from really the USB sticks. Um, it, it's working now fine. There was a long time documented workaround also at the IBM <laughs> sites uh, what to do uh, with the USB installations uh, for the enterprise power systems. So it worked also naturally for the federal stuff. And now with uh, the current version, uh, we allow uh, installation without the bootloader because it's built into the firmware. So it's just the yeah, bootloader config file that uh, needs to reside on the, on the system, but yeah, the bootloader it's not necessary. Uh, yeah, useful stuff uh, for the desktop users uh, is the RPM Fusion, uh, which carries yeah, the uh, codecs and similar things for uh, the multimedia and other content that's uh, not uh, available in, inside Fedora because of uh, yeah, the rules and uh, yeah, the, the things that we need to obey in, in Fedora for legal reasons and things, things like that. So that's also really the primary complement uh, everyone wants uh, that on the desktop system and it's available for, I think, all the Fedora architectures, including Power. So, yeah, you can do anything with Swiss Multimedia on, on Power. And here, some self-promotion. Uh, I'm offering uh, kernel builds uh, in my uh, private or public <laughs> repository. Uh, it's really tracking uh, the latest kernel. So if someone wants to be up to, up to the latest stuff uh, from the kernel side, you can run that. It's uh, built with the Power 9 as the base architecture, as opposed uh, to uh, the Power 8, uh, which is the baseline for the regular builds. And sometimes we carry some patches so that yeah, might improve the user experience uh, for yeah, the desktop users. And the other repository, uh, the, the Talos one, it's, uh, yeah, it's reasonless for carrying some, some applications or backports. Uh, that are not available in the stable federal releases, but might be useful to have there. Yeah, it's uh, almost empty now, but uh, yeah, it can serve this purpose. And also what's, what's useful is the uh, Word Preview repository uh, that's uh, maintained uh, by the Word team at Red Hat. Uh, and they provide uh, the latest Word stack, uh, QEMU, Libbert, and all the tools, uh, and rebuild them for the stable Fedora. So the latest version goes uh, to the upcoming version, but uh, yeah, this repository uh, has the rebuilds for the uh, stable releases. It was, and I think it's still useful to uh, test the latest improvements in QEMU, for example, with regard to the latest uh, features in uh, in, in the power uh, support in, in the virtualization. So, yeah, that's what complements uh, the regular Fedora. Here are some numbers. Might be useful or interesting to see uh, for people to get some rough uh, information. Uh, how many users are there? It's not about users, it's more about uh, IP addresses. So, uh, yeah, it's, I think, one per 1,000 uh, compared to the x86, and uh, yeah, maybe 170 users existing now in, in the world. It's uh, I would say pretty good number, and there are more users appearing uh, almost every other week, uh, mainly uh, through the uh, Talos IRC channel, where people are just mentioning, "Ah, yeah, I'm running Fedora, it just works," and yeah, it makes me proud. And also, I was a bit surprised about the number of uh, yeah, the mainframe users <laughs> we have. Uh, and these numbers are really for the community stuff. Uh, Federized is a project uh, as uh, 
sub-project which is called Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux, which is uh, about rebuilding uh, yeah, the packages that are not available in the Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, to be able uh, to be installable there. And the numbers of uh, users or systems that are uh, checking for updates is uh, definitely 10 times bigger than the uh, federal users. So it really uh, shows how the enterprise uh, part is, uh, or the EPL part is uh, important uh, to the overall Fedora Red Hat uh, ecosystem. And now uh, I would like to <laughs> spend some time about uh, yeah, the challenges because you already know the answer. It was it's in the title. You can use the uh, Open Power systems uh, as a desktop. So for me personally, the first challenge was uh, to really get used to a new keyboard. It has different, slightly differently out of the of the keys, and uh, it was really <laughs> difficult for me to to adapt to to that because yeah, the previous system was pretty old and. Uh, I had to switch the keyboard. Uh, some people, because uh, yeah, the systems, the tall system was released uh, pretty early, there are still some some issues. Uh, but uh, thanks uh, really to the openness, uh, there is a, an FPGA on on the board that's uh, yeah, driving uh, I think that's the power up of the systems, the power supplies, and yeah, sending the right signals uh, to the right places. And there were some issues so for the early adopters, uh, they had to uh, update really the PGA, but thanks to yeah, the open ecosystem, no problem. And even now, there are still some uh, non-fully compliant uh, power supplies, they might need some patching for the onboard FPGA. So yeah, everything can be done with an open system like, like that. Uh, yeah, the third line is a reminder that's still valid. Uh, because yeah, it's the board, if you are not buying a complete system, uh, it has some uh, some components uh, on the bottom, and it, uh, it's uh, pretty easy to uh, scratch them off and uh, yeah, really uh, destroy the system. So yeah, but again, it's nice that the system is open. It's delivered uh, with the full schematics on a DVD. So uh, really. <laughs> Uh, people with enough experience in really the electronic stuff, uh, they can even repair them, them themselves, which yeah. <laughs> some did already, some did that, so yeah, also pretty nice uh, because of the power systems, uh, they require a high level of uh, compliance with the standards. Not all consumer cards uh, work, so there is a compatible list uh, at the wiki, uh, people can check whether yeah, their card uh, will work or just to select uh, the already tested one. Another issue that uh, is still being worked on, and, but uh, the work hasn't finished yet, is that not all the Talos firmware has been merged into uh, the GitHub upstream. So it's, the firmware is open, it's available on the Raptor website through, uh, through Git, so no problem getting the sources, uh, but having them part of the open power uh, GitHub project uh, would be easier and allow to yeah, really use the latest, greatest uh, development on the firmware site as well. So yeah, still being worked on. And now more to the software part. So one issue we met uh, was uh, to convince the upstream that there is a new hardware for power platforms. They lived in the world where uh, the really old Apple G5s were the last hardware. So once we said, them, ah, yeah, you can get a small part of the number one, number two supercomputers on your desk and run yeah, and it's the distribution there. Ah, they said, okay, no problem, we will accept your, your improvements, your changes. But still, that was uh, yeah, the good part, but uh, yeah, naturally there are some other projects that are just, um, yeah, take the contributions from, from the open source uh, ecosystem in, in general, but unfortunately there are still some that, uh, yeah, well, let's say hostile or they don't like the contributions from outside. So yeah, still need to deal with that. Hopefully the situation will improve in in the future. Still, 
on the kernel side, uh, yeah, the kernel page is still the problem with the enterprise default 64 kilobytes to the yeah, regular x86 one four kilobytes. Still these uh, expectations exist somewhere, uh, both on the user space and, and also on the kernel, kernel side. Uh, yeah, talking about yeah, the lower levels, uh, different firmware versions uh, between the screwed environment, which is a small Linux distribution that runs inside or before you are booting to the uh, operating system. It uh, yeah, might cause some issues. Uh, we had uh, this problem with uh, the uh, AMD GPU cards, uh, but uh, yeah, the AMD guys were really helpful and uh, yeah, even aware of, of this issue because it's not power specific. It also uh, exists uh, in the general virtualization uh, situation where yeah, you are doing some pass through of the GPUs uh, to the virtual machines. They have the same problem. Uh, some DMA stuff for the 3D graphics, uh, it was the issue. I hope it's not now with the recent developments. Yeah, browser is the, is the main application most people probably use these days. Everyone, everything, almost everything runs there now. So uh, with Firefox runs out of the box. Uh, it's not that fast as uh, it could be because uh, the just-in-time compiler for JavaScript is not available yet on, on Power, but work is in, in progress. So other uh, major browser, Chromium, it has been ported. Slowly the parts are being merged, uh, so we'll see how long it will take. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a Qt web engine, it's a library based on Chromium that's used in many desktop applications for yeah, displaying the stuff. So it's possible there are distributions that already uh, use uh, the bits from Chromium into the web en into the uh, in their web engine uh, packages. So we are still working on that uh, to have that uh, available in, in Fedora. So yeah, it's planned. And more into the details, uh, yeah, it would be nice to have uh, yeah, the Power Envy model in QEMU. Cedric uh, from IBM is working on that for a long time but still work in progress. Uh, yeah, some of the uh, multimedia stuff is not fully optimized yet. Uh, there are some other details. So with the uh, CMD Ultimate uh, completions. Uh, so yeah, still some issues are there uh, when they appear. We as the distributions, as the community, are working with the projects uh, to fix that. Uh, there was a talk about uh, booting faster earlier this year uh, because now yeah, the booting is uh, yeah, taking, I think, a couple of minutes to really give you uh, the prompt where the user can log in. So they were discussing some ways how to make it, uh, make it faster. And what do we see uh, that's missing in the ecosystem is uh, well, CI as a service, because if you have the various open source projects, for example, on GitHub, uh, they are used to have uh, Travis for the CI, uh, but I don't think it's uh, publicly available for Power. I think there was some beta running at some point. So they are just asking, I, I, there would be some CI where we could just uh, test the stuff. It would be great for us. We are doing it internally uh, within our team in, in Red Hat, but uh, yeah, it doesn't scale with limited uh, people resources and yeah, the growing number of projects we are tracking. Usually we track uh, the projects where we uh, met some issues uh, that were yeah, specific to, to some other architecture or architecture specific, but still uh, it uh, provides a value because we are able to a report uh, to the various upstreams uh, that their changes they made, uh, they broke some tests or don't even co compile on platforms like Power. So, yeah, uh, makes it easier for them to fix the stuff before it gets released. And after the formal release uh, in the project, it uh, these updates uh, get included in the distribution. So, it should be uh, it should be good when. At the point where uh, the distributions include them. 
Uh, yeah, and now more to some funny stories uh, from the real world experience on the desktop. Firefox has the well-known browser. It had a long time back uh, in the interface between the JavaScript code and the native code. So it could crash, for example, when typing uh, in the URL bar. So it would just, just crash. It took us uh, many months to figure out what the root cause is. It was, uh, at the end, some ABI non-compliance uh, in the interface. And uh, yeah, originally, we applied some, some workarounds. It worked for a couple of releases. Eventually, it broke uh, with uh, some new compiler version. So really, it wasn't clear where the root, code is, or root cause is. But uh, yeah, fortunately, at the end, with the help uh, of the uh, Mozilla people, we were able to find the root cause, fix that, and now should run well. Uh, similar issue we had in various desktop applications, uh, and the first one, the GNOME queuing, it's, it's a part that unlocks the queuing when you log in, in into the system, so you don't have to type the password every time when you, for example, want to do some remote connection uh, through the SSH protocol. And it was really annoying me a lot <laughs> because yeah, I, as I do the development on yeah, the various uh, remote system, I use SSH mode. So yeah, I was trying to debug uh, that uh, in the early phase or when I really encountered that first. Got to some point, uh, but I got yeah, I got lost with the with uh, with the debugging. wasn't sure where to continue with that. Uh, took some yeah, couple of months delay. Get back to to that, and uh, at the end, figure out that there was some real code issue uh, with uh, with the library because uh, it's based on some events and callbacks and yeah, signaling some. Uh, some events, calling some, some methods uh, as a reaction of some, some other activity. And uh, yeah, it was really passing some different parameters. For, but interestingly, it was crashing only on power. It exists for any other architecture, but somehow magically they survived. And similar issue uh, appeared with uh, yeah, the other, uh, other applications, LibreOffice, yeah, well-known Office stack. Uh, yeah, and when we get uh, to the last line, it's also interesting to see the development uh, with the microword core. Uh, there is also an open source tool chain, uh, not only for uh, the simulation, but also for the synthesis part. So now, yeah, the uh, proprietary tools are available, I think, only on Intel. We maybe might start asking uh, to make them available for Power Platform, but maybe it will be easier to go through the open source way and really have the open source tool chain available also for uh, this uh, yeah, use case. So, yeah, as you heard, there are still some issues, or there were some issues, maybe there will be again in, in the future, but uh, in my personal experience, I'm running uh, open power desktop for over a year, it works. So everyone can can try that. And uh, maybe in the future, there'll be some open power based laptop solution. <laughs> so I will be able to <laughs> run the presentation from our laptop. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's, it's in the future. But again, with the opening uh, the ISA, everything is, is open. <laughs> Uh, here are some links. Uh, naturally, you can reach to me if you have some questions. And yeah, here is what I got, where I started. <laughs> uh, this is yeah, the step uh, for updating the PGA on the board. So, so yeah, even uh, regularly skilled people can do that, not only the experts. This is, I think, a screenshot or photo. Uh, of the first uh, installation or the first bring up of the desktop on my system. 
this is hopefully a proof uh, that I prepared this presentation on, on my system. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some regular browse this too. So thanks for your attention. So maybe there are a few minutes uh, left. So if there are any questions, so just ask or. I have a microphone since we're recording. If there are any questions, I'll feed you one while, while people are thinking of their question. I saw that Firefox needs a little work with, I'm guessing it's a spider monkey JIT when you, when you say the JIT yeah. needs yes. work. Yeah, are there any other applications, and I'll use air quotes because that means different things to different people. Are there any other application gaps that you maybe haven't encountered but you sort of know of that are on the horizon? Uh, yeah, I would have to think a lot. <laughs> Not sure. Yes, as I mentioned, uh, yes, the, the multimedia stuff uh, acceleration, it might uh, need some attention. But generally, yeah, I don't have the numbers uh, for the packages available compared to uh, Power and uh, x86 for our distribution. But I think we are at 99% or something like that, with primarily the Intel specific stuff that's not available. So I think we are mostly on par. Yeah, when you are talking about that, there is now some issue in uh, some issue with the uh, the Haskell language stack. Uh, they have some power specific bugs, some Haskell. Yeah, but it's with the latest version. So some workaround. It's probably in their compiler some some issues. So yeah, that's where they are. The maintainer in in Fedora is now excluding uh, these packages for power. But yeah, they should get that back again after. Upstream fix that. So, yeah. I, yeah, I could always say nobody uses Haskell as a language anyway, but that would get me in trouble uh, with my youngest son. You, so I won't say that. You okay? might be surprised where you <laughs> find that. <laughs> Any other questions for Dan? Come on, somebody's got a tough one for him. 4K pages, how hard is that to maintain differently than the 64K page? You're mostly a kernel guy, so uh, you can tell me. Some? I don't, we I intermittently don't. break it, I know, inadvertently, right? Well, I think it works, but there are still some occurrences where <laughs> not everything is running fine. So. Yeah, recently there was some issue with, uh, uh, with uh, Firewire drivers in the kernel that were expecting the 4K pages and they weren't working with the 64 ones. But uh, I think it's mostly fixed. It's really sometime we are, we are really working uh, on, on the distributions for, for power and even from the enterprise side. So, it's not a big issue, but still, sometimes uh, where some unexplained crash happens, it it should be the point where you think, ah, could be it be, could be page. Uh, the, the page size issue. Okay. Oh, hey, I got my first question. I knew if I stood here long enough, we'd get one. Here. <laughs> hey, uh, you you spoke at the beginning that uh, heterogeneity helps quality. Out of the challenges you showed for software. Which one were served when they were served on PowerPC meant they were more of higher quality on Intel on X X X X? Definitely, it was uh, yeah, this is a callback issue for the, the JDK application because really it was wrong. The source code was wrong. Yeah, simply there is <laughs> no other explanation. So yeah, we were able to to, to find that and uh, yeah, and only thanks to thanks to Power. It, it, it magically worked on, on the other archives, but yeah, related really the source code was wrong. So this is definitely one of the examples. And yeah, usually thanks to, C, thanks to the CI, uh, we are able to catch the issues uh, pretty early. So if, uh, yeah, not, maybe it's not, well, it's power related, but uh, to the Bikendian part, uh, yeah, still some projects do some changes. So it breaks uh, the Bikendian. Uh, support or it breaks on the Bikendian architectures because, yeah, for example, mainframe is still Bikendian and I suppose it will stay Bikendian, so we need to care about that. So, yeah, still. Okay, I think that's it. We'll say thank you with a round of applause.
Yeah, thank you.